Okay, hello kids. My name's Graham um, and I come from the Wiradjuri Nation. So everyone try and say Wiradjuri. Awesome. Everyone comes from a different place and I come from a little place in New South Wales. Okay, so I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you guys today and I'm going to show you how to uh, to make some tools and stuff like the Aboriginal people used to make. Okay, so to get our boomerang, we got to first try and find a tree that's got a branch that looks like a boomerang. See how that stick? I found this stick lying underneath the ground. And when I went over and found the stick, I thought, wow, that looks like a boomerang shape just there. See that? So if we put that boomerang there like that, it's nearly the shape of a boomerang already. So then we can grab our axe and we can cut into that branch and make it smaller and cut into it like that. And then we've got something that looks like our boomerang. Then we can get our very sharp stone again and we can cut into the branch like that and shape it. And then we cut it all down like that until we've got our boomerang. Okay, the other thing I'd like to do, who likes music? I love music. So music's really cool and Aboriginal people always had music. So who's seen these things before? What are these called? Can anyone tell me? These are called clapsticks. And no, we can't go to the shop and buy clapsticks, can we, a long, long time ago? So we had to make them. So if we get our axe again and we go out into the bush and underneath the trees, there's lots of sticks just like this. And if we get our axe and cut into the, the sticks like that and trim them down, then get our knife, our stone knife, and cut into it like that and shape them, then we can make clap sticks just like this. And see how they make different sounds. The smaller clap sticks makes this sort of sound. Whereas a big long sticks like this one can make this sort of sound. Okay, so when we make our sticks and we sit around the fire and we start singing, we can clap our clap sticks, can't we? Just like the Aboriginal people did for a long, long time. You know, the Aboriginal people, because there was no shops, they had to go and hunt for food, didn't they? They used to have to go and get plants and food from the bush because there was no shops. So what they used to do was have big long spears. Who's seen Aboriginal people with big long spears? And they used to get their spear and they'd hunt animals with them. But because they were really smart, they made this. And this is called a woomera. Everyone try and say woomera. It's a really funny word, but a woomera is what the Aboriginal people used to call a spear thrower. So let's imagine this is a big long spear and the Aboriginal people used to put their spear in there like that and the animal would be jumping across the bush and they would flick their spear and it goes so fast and it goes so straight and they always got something to eat that way. But to make a woomera, and we'd go over to a tree and we'd say to the tree, hi, Mr. Tree, can we take some of your bark? Can we take some of your wood to make our woomera? And the, the old tree would say, yes, yeah, certainly, you can have some of my wood. So then we would cut into the bark of the tree, cut it down there like that. Then it'd fall on the ground. Then we'd get our stone and we'd cut into it like that. And then we can flatten it out and we can make our woomera. All right, here's a little baby I found. And this little baby is sitting in what we call a coolerman. Coolerman is what little babies used to sit in so their mothers can put them in there like that and go walking around in the bush and gather, gather food so that the little baby's with the mother all the time. So how do we make a coolerman? Remember, we can't go to the shops in the bush, can we? because there's no shop, so we've got to be smart again and make our coolerman from the trees. Okay, 
So once again, we get our ax, we go over to the tree, and you know, some trees have got big lumps sticking out of them. Who's seen a tree with a big lump sticking out of it? Yeah, all of you have, okay. So when we go over to that big tree with a big lump, and once again, we say to the tree, hello, Mr. Tree, can we take some of your wood to make a coolerman? And the big tree would say, yeah, certainly, you can take some of my bark. So then we'd go over to that big lump in the tree and we'd cut off that lump. Okay, and then it falls on the ground. Then we get our knife once again and we carve into that big lump from the tree, cut into it like that, shape it around like that so the baby can sit in there. And there's our coolerman. Okay? So there's our little baby, and she can sit in that coolerman. And you know, if we had a nice warm fire there, the baby can sit next to the fire, can't she, and keep warm. And you know, the other really cool thing a coolerman was used for, hands up all the people, who, all the kids who have got a water bottle here today. Hand up all the kids who got water bottles. Okay, you know, this was the very first water bottle that Aboriginal people used to have. So if it rains, and we sit that out in the rain, is the water gonna fill up in there? Yeah, because it's like a bowl, isn't it? So we can use that to put water in. We can go down to the river and put some water in there like that, and then we can have a drink, can't we? Because it's, it's like a bowl. So remember, we can't buy these things, we can make them. So everything comes from the bush, okay? Okay, some of these other things I want to show you kids is I found these in the bush. And stones are very important for the Aboriginal people because they used to be used to crush things up and to make things as well. Just like our other stone here that we use for a knife. See how it's a bit sharp there? And if we cut into trees and all that sort of stuff, that can be used as a knife, okay? And how we used to make a knife, we'd just go and get a stone and we'd go down to a river or a creek and near the river and creeks is sandstone or other stones that we can rub the stone in and sharpen it and make it sharp enough so that we can uh, cut into things, okay? So stones are found all through the bush and I found these stones and you're probably wondering what this stuff is on my face and on my body. So it's called ochre. Everyone say ochre. Awesome. So ochre is found in the bush and it's a, a natural little, like a soft rock. And when it's crushed, if we put some ochre in there and we crush it up there like that, and then we add a little bit of water to it, then we can put ochre in our face and on our bodies. And ochre comes in a few different colours. We've got white, yellow, and like a brown colour, and a reddy sort of colour, okay? So there's a few different colour ochres around that the Aboriginal people always put on themselves, maybe when they had ceremonies or they had parties where people used to uh, come together and celebrate things, okay? And I'm sure you've seen ochre around at certain places all the time where the Aboriginal people dance and sing and make music and, and have celebrations and stuff. And ochre's very important for us because it identifies us as being Aboriginal, doesn't it? So the last thing I want to show you is this is a very big long plate that the Aboriginal people used to, and, used to, and it comes from like a palm tree. And the Aboriginal people used to put all their food and their nuts and their berries and all that sort of stuff inside there and wrap it up and they would put it over there and they would come back later when they've finished doing what they're doing and they can have some of their food. Okay, so it's a bit like a cupboard where, where you can put things in and it keeps it nice and clean and fresh and stuff. Okay? So hand up all the, the kids who likes cordial. Who loves red cordial? Who likes green? What about lemon cordial? Who likes lemon cordial? You know, in the bush, there's no shops, is there? So the Aboriginal people used to use some of the plants to make sweet drinks like cordial. And one of the plants they used to make, or use, was called a banksia plant. So everyone say banksia. It's a bit of a funny word, banksia, B 
but banksia plant, you know, there's, there's so many different types of banksia plants. There's yellow ones, there's red ones, there's green, you know, all, all sorts of different coloured ones. But these ones, they, these is what the Aboriginal people used to make sort of like a lemon sort of drink out of. So remember before I showed you our water bottle, remember our coolerman can be used for a water bottle. If we go down to the, the, the river and get some water and put some water in there and put our banks here in there and squirrel it around a little bit like that, and then have a drink, you know, it tastes just like lemon cordial, okay? So the Aboriginal people used to have that sometimes when they were a bit thirsty and stuff, okay? So remember that that's a banksia plant, okay? So the other thing the Aboriginal people used to do sometimes is they might hurt themselves, they might fall over or cut themselves and things like that. So because there's no shops that can go and buy some cream or even band-aids, they used to use the plants to help heal some of the cuts and things they had. And one of the really cool plants that they used to use is from a paperbark tree. So who's seen paperbark? See this stuff here? This is paperbark. Everyone say paperbark. So paperbark trees are found everywhere. And when you have a look at paperbark, it's just like paper. It just tears very easily and stuff like that. So the paperbark tree has little leaves on it like this and you know these leaves are so they're really really special because if I cut my knee somewhere like that and I got a, a the, the leaf from a tea, from a paper bark tree and I rub it on my saw like that you know it gets really uh, it gets better straight away and in a couple of days my saw will be gone because I'm using leaves from the paper bark tree and the other one is the eucalyptus tree. And the eucalyptus tree, see they're a bit bigger than the paper bar, but the eucalyptus also can be used on cuts, but it's also really good for when you've got a bit of a cough or a bit of a cold, okay? And when you've got a bit of a cough and a cold, if you cut that like that and you go like that and it smells so nice, it helps clear up your chest and makes your cold go away. Okay, so remember there's no shops, but if we go into the bush and there's all these leaves and stuff in the bush, we can use them to make ourselves better. Okay, because we know that because we're very smart and our, our people used to tell us all the time about all these plants and stuff. And that's how we taught, about, taught our children and stuff about uh, the different plants and what they were used for. Okay, so the other thing, oh, I'm going to sit down now. The other thing that the Aboriginal people used to make is baskets, and particularly women. Hand up all the girls. All you girls, if you were living in the bush a long, long time ago, you used to sit around with your mums or your aunties and your grandmothers, and you used to make baskets like this out of plants like these. Who's seen these in the bush? They're everywhere, and they're just like a leaf and plant and stuff that you can use to make a basket out of. So the Aboriginal mothers used to sit around with everyone else and they'd get their, their leaves and, and their reeds and things like that and they would make their baskets out of this. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is what we used, the Aboriginal people used to do when they wanted to brush their hair when they got up in the morning or something. So hand up everyone who brushed their hair this morning, or mum or dad helped them brush their hair. Okay, and did you use a brush? Did you use a comb or something? You know, the Aboriginal people, they didn't have them in the bush a long time ago, but they had these. And once again, this is another banksia plant. And just like the one that makes our drink, where's our drinks gone? This one, this also is a banksia plant. And I hope that you've seen them around because they're everywhere. So this big banksia plant, we can use that to cut, to comb our hair. And it feels just like a brush. Okay, so all the girls, hand up all the girls. If you were in the bush a long, long time, you'd wake up in the morning and you'd brush your hair with one of these. You know what, I'm getting a bit hungry. And if I was in the bush a long, long time ago and I wanted to go and get something to eat, I could go down to the river and I could catch a fish. Who's been fishing before? Yeah, all of you, a lot of you have been fishing, cool. So fishing's really, 
really cool and we can go down to the river and we can try and catch a fish but then we've got to bring it back to our camp and we've got to we've got to cook our fish don't we so how can we make a fire if we were in the bush a long long time ago remember there's no cigarette lighters or there's matches what did the aboriginal people used to use to make fire can i hear sticks yeah what about some stones yeah okay so the Abri let's pretend that we're going to make a fire and remember, fire's very, very dangerous and you don't make fires at home or at school or anything. This is just a pretend fire, okay? So before we make a fire, we've got to make it very, very safe. Okay, so we've got to clear everything out of the road, make sure there's no leaves or stuff like that around so we can make a little fire so we can cook our fish. And here's my little fish, okay? There's my little fish I'm going to put in there. Now I'm going to make my fire. So we brushed everything away. We put our rocks around there so the fire doesn't spread too far. What are we going to use to put in there to make the fire go? Did someone say sticks, leaves? Yeah. So we can use some of this stuff. So we put that near in there to make our fire. Then we can get our sticks. And remember I showed you this, the Woomera. Everyone say Woomera. So the Woomera, remember, can make fire for us. So if we get our Woomera there like that and we get our magic stick and we go there like that really, really fast, then all of a sudden our little fire starts. And we give it a bit of a blow and there's our little fire starting. Okay, so there's our fire. Now we can cook our little fish. So we grab our little fish, but we don't want to put our fish on the fire because it's going to burn, isn't it? So if we get the paper bark, remember we talked about the paper bark? So we get some paper bark and we put our little fish in there like that and wrap it up like that. And then if we get our axe that we made and push some of them coals out of the fire over in there like that and we put our little fish and our paper bark there, well that's going to cook in there like that. And it's not going to get burnt and it's not going to get dirty. Okay, so that's how we can make a fire and cook our fish and stuff. Okay, so the other thing we can do a fire is to keep ourselves warm. And remember our little coolerman that we made and we put our baby in our coolerman and you know, she's very tired and I can hear her crying. Wah, 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 wah. She wants to go to sleep. So we put our little baby there next to the fire, not too close and we rock the little baby to sleep and now she's going to sleep and she's nice and warm near our fire. Okay? And you know, if we wanted to, at night time, go down to the river or something, and because it's really dark, if we get one of these sticks that you can find in a lot of places and they've got a big long stick at the end of them, like that, and we put that in there and it's like a torch and we can go walking down in the night and find where the water is using one of these. So this is like a torch, okay? So they're just some of the things I've shared with you today and I hope you had some fun and you learned a little bit about what Aboriginal people used to do in the bush and how they made all these really great things, okay? And just like the Aboriginal people were very, very smart, just like you guys are too. You're very, very smart. Don't ever let anyone say that you're not because you are, okay? And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.